Welcome to a very special Christmas episode of the They May All Be One podcast with your hosts, Shane and Holly Sands. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a time to unite together. Holly and I, to unite with you all, with all our brothers and sisters and mothers in Christ, with all the angelic host in heaven surrounding the throne, crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, that we would all unite today to celebrate, to have our eyes focused upon, to praise and worship God for such a demonstration of love that he would send his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, born of a virgin. I would like to ask Holly to read our scripture to begin this podcast. Uh, Would you read that for us, honey? It comes from Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. In the same region there were shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people." For this day in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. And this will be a sign for you, by which you will recognize him. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Then, suddenly, there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Amen. Amen. And why? Why should we take this time? Why should we, on December 25th, which is pretty well known not to be the actual birthday of Jesus Christ, his incarnation, why? Would we take this day to collectively gather? Why would we rejoice? Why would we find it so uniquely special to celebrate this? Simply put, because God did. I like that. Amen. Yeah, I just there is because God did. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So think on this, friends. In all of Scripture, and I've I've talked to Holly about this this morning, and I'm I've been racking my brains, and I can see nowhere else in Scripture, nowhere else in Scripture, where a host, a multitude, think upon thousands upon thousands, maybe ten thousands upon ten thousands of angels having the glory of God surrounding them start declaring the praises of God at the incarnation of his son. Nowhere else do I see a celebration of angelic beings on earth making themselves known and rejoicing and declaring the praises of God in Scripture anywhere. That in and of itself, I would hope, would make you take time to stop and go, if God did this, so should we. And not only just say, so should we, but humbly bow our heads and just praise God for this display of love. Because without the incarnation, there is no Christianity. Without the incarnation, there can be no justification sanctification, forgiveness of sins. There is no hope for mankind, fallen, rebellious. But in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a virgin. He came and made a way where there was no way. Friends, he didn't come to abolish the law, but he fulfilled the law. 
He came and fulfilled all the scriptures. He sinless, perfect, beautiful. He shed the glories of heaven, came in humility. He didn't come with the silver spoon. He didn't come on the chariot. He didn't come with all the benefits of the world. He was sought after to be murdered from birth. Hostility pursued him all the days of his life. Because if Christ doesn't come into the world, if he does not live the life that we couldn't, then he doesn't die the death we deserve, and we have no substitution. We have no sacrifice. In this is love, not that we love God, but God loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. You think about Romans chapter 8. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Think about that. But what the law could not do, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Friends, we celebrate because God came in flesh and tabernacled among his people, his creation. Blows my mind. Now, I know that there's some out there right now going, Shane, Holly, guys, I understand it's a big, it's a big thing, but you know the, the roots of December 25th? Do you know the roots of uh, the, cr- the, quote, Christmas? Here we go. Do you, Shane, do you, do you realize that it's, it's all wrapped up in pagan holidays that pagans would worship trees and then you have Saint Nicholas, you know, Santa Claus, and you have all these other elements that had all these other pagan associations and affiliations. Shane, don't you feel don't you feel that you're misleading people by telling them to celebrate on a day? that has its origins in paganism? The answer to that is no. One, I would tell you that you should go back and do the history of Christianity. Go into the history of Christmas, and you will see that Christmas officially became a holiday after Rome became a Christian nation And yes, they took a specific day that was a pagan day and they robbed it and they tore it down and demolished it and turned it into the birth of Christ. There was a a pagan festival that was from like December 10th through the 24th. If you go to gotquestions.org, they're pretty solid and they do a good, broad brushstroke of the history of Christianity as far as Christmas. And you'll find out. And, and are there some things that overlap, you know, Holly or Yule? Yes, of course. No one's denying that, but they're three separate, completely different holidays. Two are very much pagan, one is exclusively, particularly focused on the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And from the time that that happened, the world has been trying to shut it up, especially here in America. I mean, for generations now, I would say, well, I shouldn't say generations, decades, 20, 30, 30 years, there has been a onslaught to take Christ out of Christmas, to make Christmas just another holiday surrounded by other holidays, and you shouldn't offend people by saying Merry Christmas because other people may not believe the way you believe. And that's rubbish. Friends, we join to worship and praise God the Father in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, in the fact that God has sent his Son to do for us what we could not do. Now here's the thing. If you don't feel comfortable on December 25th, that's fine. 
I'm not going to sit here and browbeat you or put you down. No, let me build you up. Let me tell you that you go to Romans 14 and you start looking at treating of days and seasons, holidays. I'm with you. Not only am I with you, I will support you in any way I can with that. But here's the thing. God celebrated the birth of his son. You should too. So I don't care what day it is. May 10th, November 1st, January 8th, uh, August 15th. I, I don't care. But set aside a day to treat it as holy. We set aside Easter as holy, and we should. There are two dates that I think every Christian should remember and should celebrate, and that is the incarnation of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. It's really the two bookends on the gospel. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. For I declare to you of what I, what I also received of first importance, that Christ died for sins according to the scriptures. The implication there is that God sent the Messiah, his son, to come for us and die for sins, our sins. If Christ doesn't come, we have no gospel. So let us set aside different thoughts, different feelings on particular days. Let us set aside any of the world's darkness and all how how it tries to bring down and take away and steal the joy that a multitude of heavenly angels declared on that day. For today in the city of David... A Savior has been born who is Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ. Let us celebrate. Let us rejoice. Let us sing. Let us unite. Let us give gifts. Let us share meals. Whatever we do, let us do it all to the glory of God the Father in the name and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He has come.